Hi there, I'm Beth Rusky, and joining me today is my business partner, Allison Miller. Hi, everyone. And we are with Tierra International. We're managing partners for Tierra, and we're coming to you today to talk about uh, what it's like to be in an argument with reality. And Allison just you know, made the best statement. She said, you know, boy, 2020 and this pandemic has given us a great opportunity to be in an argument with multiple realities, you know, all the time. So um, hopefully you'll find this conversation useful. Um, the other thing we want to point out is that good leaders, they're willing to accept reality. Like they can look at, they, they can be disappointed. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But they're willing to accept reality because it's in the acceptance that people can actually see how to pivot and move forward. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Allison, why don't you start out and, you know, um, you, you had a great uh, way of describing kind of like riding that wave of emotion and how important it is to allow the feelings to emerge. Well, I mean, we're naturally human. And when we're leading and we're facing challenges, which is any leader will, you're bound to have emotional experiences of things like anger, irritation, fear, being overwhelmed, uncertainty, feeling like an imposter. I mean, all kinds of things can come up. And it's really important to realize is that we can get caught in those feelings and really get caught in an argument with reality. This shouldn't be. But reality doesn't care about your opinion of it because it's still just reality unfolding as it, as it is. And when you can really begin to recognize is that as a leader, one of your responsibilities is find a way to metabolize those emotions so though they don't take charge of you and begin to run you as a leader, where rather instead you realize, yeah, I'm, I'm really upset about this and this is what is happening. And it is calling upon me to respond as a leader with wisdom, but not react out of emotions that I don't like experiencing. Yeah, I, I love that. Reality could care less. Like reality is saying, you need to get with my program. You're not going to bend me to you. Um, and I think that's part, you know, we get in this, I keep using the word argument, but it's, it's like this battle we have you know, where it shouldn't be, we hear ourselves say things like, well, it shouldn't be this way, or, you know, I want it to be different. And it's okay. I think it's okay. And you just said that too. It's okay to actually express that. Like, of course, we want it to be different. I mean, in the United States alone, over a half a million people have died during a pandemic. You know, of course, we would like that to be different. Um, and it's okay. You know, the phrase I like to use is the riding the wave of emotion, you know, like, you, you have to be let that crest in order to you can't stuff that feeling away or pretend they you're not feeling that um, I know in customer service uh, worlds especially in um, telemarketing centers they tell people you have to let the customer ride the mountain let them work their steam up and then they're going to come down and be you know um I guess I would tie it to your wisdom. They would just be like willing to hear or they're, they're not as reactionary at that point. Mm. You know, I'm thinking of a kind of a small example of leadership where someone, where I, where I watched someone who could not have that like understanding that reality was reality. So years ago, my son had a soccer coach and I think the boys were in like fourth grade at the time. And Inevitably, a fourth grade boy does something on the soccer field that is to, you know, doesn't look like a great, like, why would they do that? And they did that constantly and they didn't have awareness of where their bodies are and they made lots of mistakes. And this coach would get upset with the player for not doing what the coach thought he should do. And then not only would he yell at the kid, but then the kids were on to the second, the third, the fourth play afterwards, and he was still talking about what had happened. And so what happened was that he, he rendered himself sort of unable to coach. He lost his leadership capacity because no one was listening because the kids needed him to coach in the new reality they were in, but he was opposing the reality of something that had already happened. Yeah. You know, and you bring up something else is that when we are in this battle, we actually cause it to stick around longer. 
Like even in your example, those kids were three or four plays beyond and he was still back at that point. And, you know, they were all, they've already moved on. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, um, I had a conversation with a colleague who was talking about their, um, their leader, their boss, and um, that, you know, the boss is demanding, not appreciative, a perfectionist, you know, all these things. And, you know, we've talked about this a couple of times and, you know, my question to her was, so it was kind of like, yeah, he is all those things and he hasn't changed and your goal isn't to change him. So in the, in those transactions that you have with him, how is it that you can show up? What do you need to care about or not care about that would make that transaction be better for you? Cause you know, if it's better for you, it's going to be better for him. And it was one of those things, you know, we've all had those experiences in our lives where someone throws cold water in your face and you're like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's just as simple as control what you can control. And there's so many things happening outside of our control right now. You can control you. You can control how you choose to respond, not react to something. And you can accept what's so that doesn't mean you like it. I know we say that all the time. And maybe you could talk a little bit more about that, Allison. It's like, there's a difference between acceptance and tolerance. Yeah. You know, every day, I think for all of us, and I would say throughout the day, we have this experience of things are happening that we don't like. They're not what we would choose, right? It's not our preference. And I think as a leader, one of the, your key responsibilities is having a capacity to observe, to be able to step back and watch the show that's unfolding. You have to be able to obviously go and intersect with it and lead and be engaged in it, but you also have to be able to step back and have a sense of, well, this is what's happening. I have to allow it because if I don't allow it, all of my, it's almost like your, your real influence as a leader gets eaten up in contracting against that which is. And you don't want your influence to be eaten up there. You want your influence to be freed up to now figure out, well, what do we do? How do we respond? And I think one of the key things also is your it's a recognition that this is not tolerating. This is not saying it's, it's acceptable a, it's a or okay, right? But what it is, is it's activating yourself and saying, oh, this is why I'm a leader. I'm a leader because I'm here to lead through the inevitable challenges and difficulties that happen. I mean, every business, right, has its struggles and difficulties. Every family does, right? To be able to lead in whatever context you're in, it's so important to recognize that the degree to which you're like, ongoingly witnessing and really observing and being able to step back. And then that's when that, that real powerful choice comes in of like, how do I want to intervene? How do I want to respond? And you can really not like what's happening at the same time. Yeah. If we kind of, let's just bottom line this. I think for people, you know, if you tend to, um, if you do find yourself in an argument with reality, it's, it's important to recognize the cost to you. It's exhausting as you just described. You know, you're not at your best. Your creative juices don't flow in that capacity. Mm -hmm. So all that wisdom that is, it is accessible to you is being cut off. So you have a vested interest to let go of how it should be and to just recognize what is. And maybe that's the word you can use is I recognize it for what is as opposed to accept it or tolerate just recognize it for what it is and allow yourself then the space to breathe what else would you recommend for folks at this point Allison? well when you were talking and gave me an image is that really in a way what we need to be as leaders as we need to like be robust strong able to be like okay this is what's happening but we also have to be porous and receptive to be able to actually receive this is what's happening, but we have to bring a robust self forward that can hold it and contain it, not be sort of annihilated by it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, for those of you, for the young leaders reading or listening to this, you know, people don't follow people who are freaked out. 
You know, they just don't. So it does take something. You don't have to have all the answers, but being calmer or more open or more, you know, just recognizing what's going on will give people a sense of comfort that you can't even imagine. And they will follow you, you know, at that point because you're not acting kind of crazy. So um, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a topic that could probably be a five-day workshop, but we wanted to just give you a little bit of, you know, we're hearing it from a lot of our clients, you know, over the last couple of weeks that, you know, they want the vaccines to be out. They want the world to be opened up again. And we all, we all want all those things and it's coming and um, we'll get there. And, to, you know, hopefully we'll do that in a way that doesn't keep us arguing with what's so. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone.